Hello, hello. Give us a second for Facebook to send the alerts. Let's see who's out there on the Sunday. A few people popping up. See my girl Vita, what's going on fellow warrior? Oh, hello. A few other people I can't see now because I'm driving. But uh, I do see some people there. So what's going on, y'all? Happy Sunday. And how y'all doing? So just been out and about with my lovely wife who's slightly off camera here but um it's funny because you know as we, we've been out you know we we got back from Lake Tahoe which was a phenomenal time just a very relaxing time something that we really needed just some total downtime but you know we had to come back and you know, running around running some errands doing a little bit of shopping and it's funny because there's 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 a couple of malls in Northern Virginia. Uh, yesterday we were over at the Springfield Town Center, but then today we are just over at Tyson's Corner Mall, which is one of the larger malls in America and, and definitely one of the more upscale malls. But I'll tell you that Springfield Town Center in Springfield, Virginia, is right off of I-95, I-395, and it used to be a raggedy place. It was a really sad mall. And then they tore it down and they built up this town center. And it's funny because when you drive past Springfield Town Center, the parking lot is always packed. But the funny thing is, is that the mall itself is fairly empty. I mean, there's people who are in there, but when you look at the, the, the parking lot, you would think that this place is packed. But what it is, that there's a lot of restaurants at the Springfield Town Center, so you'll see, you know, uh, most of those cars, the people are at the restaurants. There's a lot of good food to eat. But like Tyson's Corner is like, it's never empty. I mean, it's, it's all, there's always people in, in, in Tyson's Corner. But here's the thing. What I really think about with Tyson's Corner and, and what my wife and I were noticing, like when we were there last night, is how dirty Springfield Town Center has been the last couple of times we've been there. And I actually said something to the, uh, once again, this, this place is, was only remodeled, rebuilt like two, three years ago. And it's really nice. I mean, if you walk in, it is a nice looking mall. You know, it's very well uh, decorated and everything like that. Just the, the, you know, the decor is very nice. But when I go in there a lot, I just notice there's trash all over the place. And, and then here it is. We just came from Tyson's Corner Mall and it's packed. I mean, it is the most packed I've seen it in a long time. And, you know, we had to pick up a thing or two. And as we were leaving, I said to Tanya, I said, babe, did you notice, like, I saw a little bit of trash by one of the trash cans by one of the, the food court areas. Because Tyson's Corner doesn't really have a food court. It just has an area where there's more of the food, but it doesn't have a food court. Well, well I, take, I take that back. There is a food court on the upper level by the movie theater, but in terms of the rest of the mall, there's not necessarily a food court but I did see a little bit of trash over there and I'm sitting there thinking like man isn't that amazing this mall has tons of food foot traffic I mean it is always there's always people in there but yet with you know 10 times the number literally 10 times the number of people come to Tyson's Corner Mall as what come to Springfield Mall but yet there's little to no trash there 
and I see they got security guard, they have uh, cleaning people at Springfield Mall, but yet there's frequently trash there. And what came to mind, and I was telling Tanya, I said, you know, have you ever heard about the broken window theory? And she didn't. And I said, so what happened is that uh, I think a psychologist or whatever came up with this idea because he had observed that in places like New York, for example, Baltimore, whatever, generally inner city type areas, he noticed that when you go past some dilapidated area, right, and you'll see a, you know, a house front, a row home, whatever you want to call it, that has a broken window, and you might notice that one broken window, but then as time goes on, you'll start noticing more broken windows. You'll start noticing graffiti. And then before you know it, the whole area has become dilapidated. And it seems like it happens overnight. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but it does happen rather rapidly. And so what, they, what this guy surmised was that the broken window theory is that when you take whatever little miscreant who sees something and maybe just randomly picks up a rock, you know, being a dumb kid, throws a rock at a at a window and breaks the window, right? Well, if somebody threw a rock through your window, you're gonna be like, hey, hey, what are you doing, right? And you're gonna have a problem with that because you live there. You care about your property. You're gonna chase that kid off. You're gonna try to find out who their parents are. You're gonna try to get their parents to pay for that and repair the broken window, right? But what happens if the kid throws a rock through the window and nobody responds or reacts? You know, and maybe that kid walks past that same place a day or two later and someone, no one has done anything to repair that broken window. You know, you never put like a piece of cardboard up or anything, you know, to, to fix the hole. So here's what the kid comes to the conclusion of. Nobody cares. Right? And so human nature is such that when you realize that nobody cares, why should you care? So now I can get away with it. So what he does is like, you know, not he goes back the next day and throws another rock. Or maybe his buddies with him, hey man, you want to have some fun? Let's throw some rocks through these windows. And before you know it, this, this home, this row house, this warehouse or what have you, all the windows are busted out. Before you know it, people decide to start spray painting graffiti. Before you know it, people start leaving trash everywhere. And everything becomes degraded. And it doesn't happen overnight, but it seems like it happens overnight. And it's because seemingly no one cares. And if you don't care, why should I care? If you don't value your property, why should I value it? If you don't value yourself, why should I value yourself? And here's what happened is that one of the things, as far as I've been able to study, is that under Mayor Giuliani in New York, and there's a lot of people who have a problem, they, they have a problem with the whole like stop and frisk thing. And I'm not going to sit here and endorse stop and frisk, but I understand the thought process behind stop and frisk. I understand the thought process behind uh, active policing where the police start getting on people for relatively minor infractions because some people are sitting there like man there's there's murders taking place and so on and so forth you know well, why are you harassing me man just because i tossed some trash and didn't put it in the trash can why are you harassing me because i jaywalked man go take care of those murders well here's the thing like i'll tell you like my family's out in colorado and one of the things I noticed about Colorado, especially Colorado Springs, is very clean. And like, whenever we go back home to Colorado Springs, I'm always like shocked if I see trash on the side of the road anywhere. I mean, I kind of jokingly talk about it, it's the clutch, the pearls. They were like, oh, who would do such a thing? This is Colorado Springs. We don't do those things here. Why would you leave trash? You're messing up the natural beauty of Colorado Springs. But that's how people think in Colorado Springs. You wouldn't dare leave trash 
throw trash out your window because that's not how we do things in Colorado Springs. But I noticed, like, for example, we go back to Detroit. It's amazing the difference between 8 Mile. When you cross over 8 Mile, it's, I've always, always, I always use the example of uh, the Wizard of Oz. Or, for example, when you go up Jefferson in, uh, and you leave the inner city. Because, you know, they're revitalizing some of downtown Detroit. But when you go up Jefferson... And then you get into the area that, let's just be real, is a predominantly white area. And I'm telling you, when you cross this line, and, and I'm having a brain fart moment, so I don't remember the, the name of the area. And I'm sure one of my friends who was listening knows the name of the area. But uh, there's an area just north of Detroit. I think it's Gross Point. I want to say it's Gross Point. Um, where it is just beautiful. And it's where you start getting more of the lakefront property. And I'm telling you, it goes from raggedy hood to green lawns and all that just like that literally crossing one street and if you're driving out there in Detroit and you go across 8 Mile one of the things you'll see when you cross out of Wayne County and you go into Oakland County you'll see just like that it goes from trash on the side of the road to spotless and you know I'm sitting there wondering like okay, this whole broken window thing. Well, maybe it's because people care. But see, there's a quote from uh, former President John Adams, and he said that, uh, it's like, I think he said this quote in like 1815, something to that line. Oh, seven, I'm sorry, 1785. So he made this quote. He basically said that uh, our form of government was made only for a moral and religious people. It's wholly inadequate for the governance of any other. So you have to understand that our government was created to be limited for a reason. And it kind of goes back to even like what was uh, uh, spoken in, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 when it talks about being free from the bondage of the law so that you may have liberty. See, there's a diff difference between liberty and simple freedom. See, you have freedom, you can do whatever you want. With, with liberty, you can also do whatever you want, but there's a higher calling with liberty that calls, calls you to not do something just because you can do it. So when it comes to something like throwing a rock through a window, of course you can. But why would you? When you live in a society that is liberty-based... And I always point out the difference between there's there's a difference between being liberty based versus being a uh, you know like I, like libertarian. I know a lot of people were like, oh, I'm more of a libertarian. And Ronald Reagan talked about the fact that um, in every conservative there is a libertarian streak. I think that even the term libertarian has been bastardized, where a lot of people who like to refer to themselves as libertarians are maybe more uh, libertine than anything else, that they're more toward, uh, prone towards licentiousness than they are towards liberty. And there's a difference. Once again, liberty is knowing that you can do whatever you want to do, but you don't do it because you have a higher sense of morality and that you know you shouldn't do it and you won't do it. And that goes back to what John Adams was saying is that our former government was created for a moral and religious people. It's wholly inadequate for the governance of any other. And what happens is that the more libertine people become, the more that they lean towards licentiousness, you know, things begin to degrade. And that's why you end up with having, instead of just the Ten Commandments, then you got to have, you know, was it the, the 600 or whatever laws uh, that Moses ended up having to add because people were not just simply thinking about, hey, you know, this is something I shouldn't do, so I'm not going to do it. And I think about that mall, Springfield Mall in Springfield, Virginia, and the trash that I see laying around. And I, I find myself thinking, like, and, and there's a lot of kids that you'll see in that mall. And there's other demographics that I'm not going to go into, but you know, there's a lot of, you know, kids, a lot of other demographics that I see there, and they seem to have no real moral or real religious guidance, moral compass, if you will, and that leads to them having this broken window kind of mindset where 
even though there are freaking trash cans all over the place, you think nothing of tossing your trash on the ground. And because the Springfield Mall, whoever owns that mall, because they don't go out of their way to immediately clean up things, people begin to think, well, there's trash on the ground, so what difference does it make? What difference does my little uh, uh, straw wrapper, what difference does my little piece of trash make? There's trash everywhere. My little trash is not going to make any difference. All the windows are already broken. There's multiple windows broken. What difference does it make if I break a window? There's already graffiti on half the walls in the buildings. What difference does it make if I add graffiti to it? This, this is just the reality of human nature and human behavior. And so one of the things that they started doing is they started having to hammer people for relatively minor infractions. Giving big tickets to people for jaywalking. Giving big tickets to people for leaving trash. And you sit there and go like, man, this is stupid, man. You're going to make me pay a $200 fine because I dropped a, a candy wrapper? Okay. But see, look at, look at what's happened in San Francisco. You know, word has it you can smell San Francisco way before you get to it. Why? Because licentiousness. Because of the broken window. Because leftist, regressive, socialist ideology has led to people not having a moral compass. Has led to people being able to uh, just doing whatever feels good. In this regard, relieving themselves, urinating, defecating whenever they feel the need to. So now they have, you know, diseases running rampant in San Francisco. They had to pay people six figures. They're having to hire people and pay six figures for people to come and sweep and power wash the streets of San Francisco. You see the broken window? You see how it ends up going down? But see, you're dealing with people, see, you're dealing with people who were not raised properly. You know, you're dealing with a generation who didn't get their behinds whooped. You're dealing with people who were get, got put in time out. You're dealing with people who were raised to believe that their self-esteem was the most important thing. We want to raise little Johnny's self-esteem. And when you look at like, I don't know if you guys saw the video where the precious snowflake just totally melted because a guy uh, at this vape shop was wearing a uh, uh, American flag t-shirt or whatever and a make America great, you know, Donald Trump hat. And this guy just totally melted down and cussing and screaming, I mean, literally screaming. And I was sitting there thinking like, yo, I've seen that guy before. I've seen that guy a thousand times. I've seen that guy when he was a kid, screeching, falling out, and the parents, rather than snatching his little behind up, the parents just was like, well, I just don't, you know, Johnny's just having a moment. You know, he's, it, he's just needs a nap. No, Johnny needs his little behind snatched up. Because we can see beyond any reasonable doubt what happens when Johnny doesn't get his little behind snatched up. Johnny begins to think that this is acceptable behavior. This is one of the things I've talked about all the time, that the problem with leftist regressive socialist ideology is that it does not have immediate uh, consequences and repercussions. I, I always wish that the moment you touch, you know, that it had like an electric shock or a hot stove type of response. So that the moment you think of or try to implement some sort of leftist, regressive, socialist ideology, that you got burned, that you got shocked. But it's not how it happens. What happens is 20 years later, you have 
the explosion in single parent households. You have in the black community, you had, uh, you know, because of leftist ideology, you went from a relatively large number in a, you know, a, a single parent households of 23% in 1965 to one generation later, 21 years later, it doubled to over 50%. One generation later, you know, and by 19, uh, by 2005, whatever like that, it got up to nearly 75%. I see my boy Chris Sumner there. What's going on, fellow warrior? And, and see, so you have to address these things at that moment. When somebody's dropping trash, you need to address that right there. Because if you don't, other people are going to sit there and say, well, there's a piece of trash there. It's been sitting there for an hour. Nobody's bothered to come along and sweep it up. So what difference does it make if I drop some trash? What difference does it make if I spill my drink? Nobody cares. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it. What difference does it make if I act a fool and throw a temper tantrum? There's no consequences and repercussions. I don't feel the immediate consequences and repercussions for my actions. So they must not matter. See, this is a mindset that actually there's a reason why the police started doing what they did because we failed to address these issues with kids early on. Yes, it's the butterfly effect. If you chew, if you do not address this right away, then the way the mind works is that you begin to think that there are no consequences and repercussions. It does not matter. It's insignificant. And then people wonder why this neighborhood turns to crap. It's because you didn't care enough to address it right then and there. I mean, I, I had to laugh, right? Because yeah, I'm old school, man. I'm, I'm unashamedly old school. When I acted up, my mom and dad got in my behind quick, fast, in a hurry. And then while I'm sitting there, <laughs> you know, my mom and dad said, shut up all that crime before I give you more to cry about. <laughs> right? That's what you did. And you know what? Because my parents had a standard. They set a standard for behavior. And you learn that early on. Early on, you learn. See, this if you have failed to set a standard, but more importantly, if you have failed to take action, like I'll tell you like this. I dated a girl once and she had a, uh, she was a single mom and I dated her briefly, right? And one of the reasons why I knew she and I could not be together was because I saw what happened with her kids. And I always say like this, it's just like, you know, if you know anybody who has a concealed carry permit or whatever like that, you, the first thing you do, you don't go pulling your gun out and flashing it around whenever you feel like it, right? You, know, you, you have to be judicious. If you pull it, you better be ready to lose it, uh, to use it. And you know what? My parents, they never really threatened to whoop my behind. My parents would be like, you got one more gun. Or you get that mama look or that dad look. And that mama look or that dad look let you know you better straighten up real quick. And if you didn't, you cut up a little bit. Before you knew it, you were getting your behind whoop just out of nowhere, right upside the head. And you're sitting there tight. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> right? You didn't expect it because you were cutting up Mom and dad told you, straighten up. You were cutting up before you know it, right upside the head. I bet you straightened up then. And you know, because I caught those whoopings when I was younger, because my parents set standards when I was younger, and when I failed to meet the standards, I felt an immediate response. I got an immediate reaction for failure to meet the standards. They don't have to have those standards for me today. I look around and I say, why would I dump trash? Why would I drop my trash on the ground? That's wrong. And you know, I've had it where, for example, I went to toss something in a trash can and maybe I missed. You know what I did? I took my behind over there and picked it up and put it in the trash. I didn't go, eh, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. I've seen people do that. I have seen people do that where they try to dump, dump some of the trash, they miss and they leave it there. And you know what I wanna do? right upside the head and I want to be like I'm doing what your mama should have done 
right upside the head. And where you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, see, it hurts a lot more now when you're older. Like my mom said, a hard head makes a soft behind. You end up with a neighborhood of broken windows. You end up in a dilapidated neighborhood. You end up with a community of single parent households. It doesn't happen out of nowhere. There's a reason why Tyson's Corner Mall is nice and relatively spotless, even though there's 10 times the amount of traffic at Springfield Mall. There's a reason why there's places like Singapore. And people, and I remember years ago, maybe you might remember this, where there was a young man, a young American, who got in trouble in Singapore because he spit his gum on the ground or spit or something like that, and he ended up getting caned. Yes, like a cane to his backside. And we're just like, oh my God, that's just terrible. That's, that's barbaric. But you know what? Those people in Singapore, they're like, yo, you know what's barbaric? Spitting your gum on the ground. There's trash receptacles. Put your gum in a wrapper and put it in your pocket or whatever until you get to a trash can. Because think about this. Haven't we all stepped on gum or, or sat at a table or whatever like that and got gum on our pants or dress or whatever like that because some schmuck decided, oh, rather than get up and put my trash, my, my gum in the trash, I'm just going to stick it underneath the table. You know what will stop that? right upside the head. As soon as somebody sees you putting that gum underneath the table, as soon as somebody sees you spitting your gum on the ground, right upside the head. Now all of a sudden, you get an immediate feedback. And that's only necessary when either A, your mama and dad failed to raise you, failed to have a standard, failed to enforce the standard when you did not meet the standard. And then see, then you become a problem for the rest of us. And you know, here's the thing I always point out. See, like people talk about, man, you know, the cops, man, they, they, they're brutal, so on, so forth. You know what? What's interesting is that when you don't have run-ins with the cops, you don't worry about cops going upside your head. Like in Germany, I grew up in Germany, right? I see some, you know, some other, uh, uh, high school classmates, they knew you didn't play with the German police because the German police didn't have police brutality. The German police said, look, stop what you're doing. It was like red light, green light. The German police were like, stop, halt. And you better play freeze frame, right? Because if you didn't, they'd get to whooping. They didn't care, black, white, Turkish, whatever like that. The German police will stop your behind if you acted a fool. They said, stop. And you did red light, green light. Stop what you're doing. And once again, if the police have to get involved, do you understand that the police are not there to be your friend? The police are not there to sit there and go, excuse me, young man. I noticed that you broke the law. I surely would appreciate it if you, if you would abide by the law. That's not what they're there for. They're there for law enforcement. If you don't want your child getting their behind whooped by the cops, you should whoop their behind early and often so that they have more fear of you than they do of the cops. I'm just saying, it works out that way. The one time, and once again, you got some classmates so they know I'm not going to lie about this. The one time I did something stupid, because I decided to hang out with the fellas and go against my own, you know, uh, better upbringing, and I did something stupid, I was more afraid, like I was sitting there like, oh my God, my dad's gonna kill me, literally. My father was away at war. My father was away at Desert Storm. My father missed most of my senior year of high school. He left in August of 1990, didn't return until April of 1991. Hanging out with the fellas, nothing better to do. Got stuck on stupid, went and did something I shouldn't have did. We got caught. And guess what? It's funny because there was a, 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 a military police guy 
who used to harass me and my friends anyway, and we weren't even doing anything, but oh, he could, he was so glad to have caught us. And I'm, listen, it's full disclosure. I had no reason to lie about this. I was like, we're sitting there. I'm crying. Not because we like, like I'm sitting there looking at this, this military police guy like, man, I'm just like, I ain't worried about you, dude. I didn't care about him. He was almost gloating because he thought that, you know, I'm like, man, we really hadn't really done anything, but we, one time we got stupid, he happened to be there and he was going, and I'm sitting there, I know he's sitting there thinking like, yeah, you know, yeah, you sitting there crying like a little punk. Now, man, shut up. I'm not worried about you. I was more upset at myself because I had failed to live up to the standard that my parents set. When my mom had to come get me, I was more upset, I was crushed because I knew I had failed my family name. Man, to this day it still gets to me because my mom was so disappointed. The look of disappointment hurt me to my core because I knew better. I was raised better and I knew better and I failed to live up to it and that hurt me just to the depth of my core because my parents did raise me better and so when I think about that and I think about suffering the consequences and repercussions of your decision you have to have that that that's what that's why we have that next layer of police and law enforcement they're there that when you if your parents did raise you properly if you decided, because we have free will, if you decided to break a window, that now you gotta suffer the consequences. But the biggest thing, I'll never forget, I was just like, one, I was hurting because my mom was hurt by my stupid actions because I was raised better. But after that, I was like, what is dad gonna do when he gets back? I would literally, I swear to you, I was like, my dad is gonna come back from war where my dad has been shot at and done some shooting. And I'm sitting there thinking, my dad's gonna come back and kill me. Literally, I, I swear to you, I was sitting there thinking, I'm gonna die. I was like, is there any way we can keep my dad from knowing about this? Now, the funny thing is, is that we got home and I told her, I was like, mom, you're not gonna tell dad, are you? She was like, oh, no, we'll, we'll figure this out, right? Well, here's the thing. When my mom got the phone call, she was on the phone with one of our good family friends. And then my dad just happened to call that family friend later. And that family friend was like, yeah, you know, Margaret's having to go pick up Chris or whatever like that. So... I'm in the car with my mom headed home. And I'm just like, you're not going to tell dad, right? And we get home. The phone rings. And uh, I'm like, hello? And my dad is like, I hear the phone. And my dad said, I heard you've been effing up. That's what he said. My whole blood, I, I, I went cold. And, I, and I'm looking at my mom like, you told him, right? No, come to find out, no, my mom didn't tell on me. Uh, it was, that's how things happened at the, uh, the, you know, my dad happened to call and speak to our family friend and literally just as it happened. Now, when my dad got home a couple of weeks later, he didn't kill me, obviously. But my father was like, well, you're almost grown. I was 17, wasn't 18. He was like, you know what? You get to deal with the consequences and repercussions of your action. Because I raised you better. Now you get to deal with it. I had to do community service. Yeah, that really sucked. Last couple of weeks before I'm getting ready to leave, Jeremy had to do community service because I got stuck on stupid. I had to suffer the consequences and repercussions of my stupid choices. And I wish that more people had to suffer those consequences and repercussions instead of being coddled.
Because here it is, that was 28 years ago, 27, 28 years ago, and it still bothers me that I got stuck on stupid, but I'm glad that I got caught being stuck on stupid. That's why I don't suck today, because I never got away with stuff. That's why I don't believe in breaking people's windows. I don't believe in leaving trash around. Because one, I was raised better, and two, when I did do something stupid, I got caught and had to suffer the consequences and repercussions. My parents didn't try to shield me from the consequences and repercussions of my stupid decisions. And if you try to shield your kids from the consequences and repercussions of, the, of their decisions, shame on you. Shame on you. And now the rest of us have to deal with your stupid kids. Now, see, you're worried like, th then even more shame on you if you complain when the cops put a foot in the behind of your child. Because if you had put a bigger foot in the child, in, your, uh, in the foot of your, uh, put a bigger foot in the behind of your child, they most likely would have been more afraid to do something stupid, right? And if they did something stupid, because look, Adam and Eve, even though they were told otherwise by God, they still, through their own free will, chose to eat of the fruit of the knowledge of truth, uh, of good and evil. That's human beings. We're going to do that. But they had to suffer the consequences and repercussions. I'm just finding myself sitting there like, you know, when people break windows, follow the analogy, when they break a window, when they leave trash, maybe we should be more like Singapore. I almost don't want to go back to the Springfield Mall because the last couple of times I've been there, I've been disgusted. It's a very nice mall, but I've been disgusted by the amount of trash that's there. Like, we might go to the movie theater, and we walk out, and it's like, you know, sometimes, because we try to go to the late night movies. We leave the movie, and it'll be like midnight when we leave the movie. And I'm sitting there going, okay, the mall itself closed two hours ago. Why has the cleaning crew not come through immediately and cleaned the stuff up? And I find myself wondering, like, okay, if I came in this mall first thing in the morning, is the mall cleaned up? Has the cleaning crew came through earlier in the morning? Or is it still dirty? At what point are they cleaning up? At what point are they fixing the broken windows? Because human nature is such as that when we see trash laying around, we see broken windows, we figure nobody cares, so it doesn't matter. When we see kids acting a fool and they don't get some, and somebody doesn't put a foot in there behind when they act a fool, other kids see this, right? It's like one of the reasons why you should be careful about who your kids associate with. You know, when we you heard her, right? You know, you take your kid to daycare, whatever like that, and your kid goes to daycare and maybe little Johnny is cussing up a storm or doing whatever like that. You know what happens? Your child is prone to say, hmm, little Johnny tried that. Let me try it. You know what needs to happen? The first time your child does what little Johnny does, you need to snatch their behind up. Because if you don't, your child becomes little Johnny. Your child becomes a model for a lot of other kids. It's a broken window theory, folks. It's, it's just, it's not even a theory. It's a fact. It's just the reality. There's a reason why the streets of Singapore are sparkling clean is because one, the culture is such that they have that standard. But two, when people violate the standard, they immediately face consequences and repercussions. The police in Singapore will snatch a knot in your behind. It's not rocket science, folks. It, it's sociology 101. It's biblical. Raise up a child in the way that they should go and they won't soon depart from it. But once again, that has to be affirmed by society as a whole. When somebody's acting a fool, when somebody's dropping trash, they need to get snatched up. Because otherwise, you end up with a very nice mall recently rebuilt. Nice stores, everything like that, and it's already within three years looking trashy. It's not rocket science, folks. You got to fix that. And it takes more energy to fix it later than it did if you were proactive 
and fix it earlier. Frederick Douglass said the same thing. It's easier to train up children than it is to repair broken men. So listen, I got to run here for a meeting with my mentor. But thanks for listening listening to me rant. I hope I gave you something to think about. I hope you, hope you just really took this in. I hope you share this with other people. Maybe you disagree. That's on you. You're free to disagree. I'm right. <laughs> it is true. I'm right. You can disagree if you want to. I'm right. But uh, share it with your family and friends. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And if I don't talk to you between now and New Year, have a happy New Year. New Year's Eve, I guess it's tomorrow. Take care. God bless.